Good morning. You all look beautiful. I'm Lynn Rosenthal, and I'm the White House Advisor on Violence Against Women. And it's my pleasure on behalf of President Obama and Vice President Biden to welcome all of you to the White House. I want to say a special welcome to our friends from Major League Baseball, the NCAA, the NFL Players Association, and their special guest, Usama Young of the Cleveland Browns. Usama? Thank you for coming. I want to begin by taking us back in time. And some of you have been with us from the beginning. 18 years ago, then Senator Biden exposed the ugly truth that women in this country were being beaten and abused at shockingly high rates and that the perpetrators of this violence were rarely held accountable. He exposed this ugly truth, and he wrote the Violence Against Women Act to change all of that. And in large part, we've succeeded. Since the passage of the act in 1994, rates of domestic violence have dropped by more than 70%. But we also know today that young women ages 16 to 24, still experience those shockingly high rates. We know today that one in five young women will be sexually assaulted while in college. We know that one in 10 teens have been physically hurt on purpose by someone they're dating just in the past year. And we have new survey data from the Centers for Disease Control that tells us that 80% of sexual assaults and 70% of intimate partner violence occurs before the victims are the age of 25. These are young women, young people just starting out in life. Vice President Biden looked at this data and he said, this is where we need to be working. This is where we can make the most difference. And so the one is too many campaign was born. Last fall, the vice president tweeted the very first one is too many video to college students asking for their ideas on how we could prevent violence. We got over 2,000 responses, and many said exactly the same thing. We need to change the culture. We need men to speak out. We need men who are role models for other men to speak out. Today, you will see all of that in action. And I want to say a word about the importance of the athletes who have been a part of this project. I grew up in a sports obsessed family. I'm talking the kind of family that uh, planned our summer vacations based on how far, how many Major League Baseball stadiums we could drive to in a two week period. I'm talking the kind of family that camped out in front of the orange, so I'm dating myself, camped out in front of the Orange Bowl for three days every year to get playoff tickets, year after year. So I know what it's like to sit around those dinner tables with those endless conversations about statistics and injuries and bad calls and great plays. I know what that's like, but I can only imagine what will happen around those tables when those same men who are the subject of those endless conversations are suddenly in the room, their voices are suddenly in the room on television speaking out about violence against women. For the One is Too Many campaign, this is a game changer. I want to acknowledge Cynthia Hogan, who you'll meet in a few minutes in our program, who is the Vice President's counsel and was counsel to the Senate Judiciary in 1994 when the Violence Against Women Act was being written. She's seen this story unfold, and she's the one who had a vision for this next chapter and worked very closely with President Obama and Vice President Biden to make it a reality. This project also would not have been possible without the leadership of Valerie Jarrett. Valerie is the senior advisor to, to President Obama and the chair of the White House Council on Women and Girls. She's going to share more with us about President Obama's leadership and ending violence against women. I'd like to introduce Valerie Jarrett.
Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to join Lynn in welcoming all of you to here to the White House, and I'm thrilled to look around and see so many supporters of this important cause, as well as several very, very good friends. And it's nice to see you guys here in the audience as well. We're particularly happy to have you. On behalf of the President, I bring you his greetings. This is an issue that means a great deal to him, not just as President of the United States, but as a son, as a spouse, and very importantly, as the father of two extraordinary young girls. Three years ago, uh, the President created the White House Council on Women and Girls, and as Lynn mentioned, I have the honor of chairing the Council. Uh, and I'm here with Tina Chin, who you'll see in a second. She's just outside, who's the Executive Director. And the President's mission by creating this Council was to make sure that every agency in the federal government, every department, every division, focused on what we could do to improve the quality of lives of women and girls in every aspect of the federal government. There is nowhere more apparent than in the historic steps we've taken to end violence against teens and women. The Vice President and Secretary Duncan recently released guidelines to help new schools and colleges and universities better understand their obligations to prevent and respond to campus assault. I remember nine years ago, hard to believe, when my daughter started college, her college was one of the few in the country that it included as a part of its orientation a comprehensive program to prevent assault. Now, as a result of the efforts of the Vice President and Secretary Duncan, we're seeing that spreading across the country. Tina, put your hand up. I introduced you for a second ago. I didn't see you. That's Tina Chen, who... In addition to being the uh, executive director of the White House Council on Women and Girls, she's also the First Lady's uh, chief of staff. The Justice Department made a long-awaited change in the definition of rape used to collect our national crime statistics. They also expanded the National Dating Abuse Helpline so that it's available around the clock, online chat or on the telephone, so that people who need assistance get it immediately. When they need help, they cannot wait. At the Department of Health and Human Services, Secretary Sibelius announced Apps Against Abuse, a challenge to technology innovators to develop mobile applications to respond to and to prevent abuse. Today, the winning app, Circle of, Circle of Six on Watch, are available for free download. And since February, these apps have been downloaded more than 20,000 times. We're hoping after today, as everybody tweets it out, it'll happen a lot more often because it's there and it's available for those who need it most. Of course, changing our policies is only a part of the equation. As Vice President Biden often says, we must also figure out how we're gonna change the culture. Today, President Obama is joined by Vice President Biden and other sons and fathers who are doing their part to end violence against women as a part of the Vice President's One Is Too Many campaign that Lynn just mentioned. So I want to really thank you all for being here. Your presence here means a great deal to us. Uh, your support, your efforts here today, as well as what each and every one of you do um, around the country helping to end this violence. And so uh, in a moment, you're, we're going to be joined by Jimmy Rollins, David Price, and of course, Vice President Biden. Thank you all for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Rollins, David Price, and the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. First off, thank everybody for having us out here. Um, it's an honor to be here for the release of this public service announcement. 
Um, I'm filling in for my teammate, Evan Longoria, and I know that he is very disappointed to not be here today. I may not always stand with the Phillies and Jimmy Rollins, but uh, <laughs> especially since they beat us in the 2008 World Series. Um, but today, me and him are up here together standing for the, for the same cause, and that is uh, the fear of abuse. It's something that no woman should go through from a husband, a boyfriend, or a date. No man should hit a woman for any reason. This is a message that the athletes in this PSA are trying to push across. All young men and young women should be well aware of what is going on and making this loud and clear. It's a message the Vice President Joe Biden has been sending for years. Now we all want to make sure that the new generation of young people understand how wrong relationship violence is and that we have to step up to end it. Here's Jimmy Rollins. Uh, thank you, David. Welcome, everybody. And thank you, Valerie. President Obama made a great decision when he appointed you to be the head of the White House Council on Women and Girls. It's an honor to be here today to showcase this public service announcement. When I was asked to be a part of this, I said yes right away. I said yes because no woman should have to fear abuse. No man should hit a woman for any reason. This is a cause that is near and dear to my heart, even more so now that I'm a father. I want my daughter and everyone's daughter to grow up in a world free of violence and abuse. My parents and my sister are in attendance today. Thank you for coming. And uh, they feel strongly about this as I do. And I would also like to thank the other guys who were a part of this. I am proud to be in their company, although it's just obviously David and Mr. Veep right here. <laughs> and you will see in just a minute that it's really great company, including, of course, like I said, my man, Mr. Vice President Biden. <laughs> As the author of the Violence Against Women Act, then Senator Biden was the first national leader to speak out as a man committed to any violence against women. As Vice President, he promised to bring this message to a new generation, and he has done just that. Under his leadership, the administration has taken new steps to reach teens and young women. He is working to change attitudes to send this message that violence against women is wrong. He and President Obama have set the example for the rest of us to follow, and it is now my great pleasure to introduce Vice President Joe Biden. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Thank you. Jimmy, David, thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much, and thank you for being here. Uh, I was telling David, uh, he's a hell of a ball player, but I'm getting tired of Jimmy Rollins. <laughs> my wife, I am a Phillies fan as well, but my wife is an absolute fanatical Phillies fan. And every night when I go to bed, true story, if Jill's awake, I lean over to kiss her goodnight. As I turn my head, I look right into a bobblehead of Jimmy Rollins <laughs> sitting on the dentist. That's more than a man should have to take. Jimmy gave her his warm-up jacket. She always around the house with her jacket on. And, uh, you know, anyway, that's just, uh, but I love him anyway. I love Thank him anyway. You. Thank you. And he's got a new baby girl, folks, a little baby girl. I told him, I told him, just understand now, right, Valerie? Surrender now. Don't pretend. Don't pretend you're in charge. Just surrender. Your, your wife will take care of it for you. Uh, but all kidding aside, congratulations, Jimmy. And, uh, um, and it was great to meet your mom and your sister and your dad. And uh, I also want to say hello to Andy Katz. It's great to have you here, Andy. Uh, um, thank you so much for being part of this. Even though uh, they couldn't be here today, I want to send my thanks to all the other folks who uh, you'll see in a minute who did this PSA. Uh, Jeremy Lin, Evan Longoria, Eli Manning, who came and spent the day. It was a lot of great fun being with him. David Beckham, Joe Torrey, who's been a great, great friend of ours in this cause for a long time. And of course, President Obama who not only understands this, but feels it in his bones. All you have to do is watch him, look at him, be with him, with he and his two daughters. This is one heck of a family man. One of the things we do um, all the time, Andy, is uh, any Saturday morning during the uh, 
basketball season, you go into a little suburban gymnasium in Maryland, and you'll see the president, the vice president, the first lady, the second lady, 85 Secret Service agents uh, <laughs> watching my granddaughter and his daughter playing the same basketball team. And man, does he take it seriously, even then, you know. And he said to me, I need you to do brackets. I said, hell, I just have trouble controlling them at the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he's a great guy, great coach for these kids, and, uh, and he feels this in his bones. You know, uh, you know I was, uh, when I was growing up, I was lucky. I had uh, a father who uh, everybody said, why did I get so engaged in this so early on? Why do I feel so passionate about this issue of violence against women? It's because I was raised, it was, my mother was a wonderful woman, my sister, my family. My dad, my dad was a, was a gentle, noble man. And my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, the, the cardinal sin of all sins is a man hand, raising his hand to a woman or a child. And I'm not, I'm not joking about that. That was my father drilled into every one of his four children including my sister. And you know, it's a lesson I think that uh, unfortunately an awful lot of young men, a lot of young men who don't grow up with a, a, with a father figure in the home, that these guys are gonna help a lot of young men learn. Unfortunately today, young boys and men get a lot of mixed signals out there about uh, what constitutes manhood. And a lot of them get the wrong message uh, about uh, what other men might think is okay. Uh, and we have to confront these messages. They get subliminally and directly in their, in, in their communities and on television, and just wherever it is. And that's why uh, it's so important today that these incredible athletes, uh, uh, these guys got together, stepped up, and did this PSA. They epitomize, I think, what it means to be strong, successful men. And as you'll see, they, uh, they, they say clearly and directly that there's never Never, never, never an excuse for a man to raise his hand to a woman other than in self-defense. When I first said that at a hearing, the first hearing I had, I got all kinds of negative response. I got it in letters, I got it from commentators, I got it from certain groups. That how could I say that? This was a private matter. This was a private matter. We used to talk about, quote, your woman as if a woman was a chattel, as if a woman was something to be owned. I know it sounds strange, but you know, when young men see this PSA, they turn it on in ESP in the morning or when they watch uh, Fox Sport at night, they're gonna see what, uh, when they tune in uh, into a ball game, a Major League Baseball game or NFL Network, they're gonna see this message. And they're gonna hear a simple message from some of the folks they admire most in the world. You guys standing up here. When it comes to abuse, there's nothing manly about it. It's never, never, never okay. One woman hurt is one too many. And listen, you college guys out there, and any college guy listen to this, you're role models too for the younger guys, for the younger guys on your teams, for the younger brothers you have, for your friends. And you have an obligation, an affirmative obligation, an affirmative obligation, a moral obligation to speak up, a responsibility to show younger boys and men what it means to be a good, decent, strong man. You guys have to speak up. There's no excuse, by the way. No excuse. No excuse. The other guy's bigger, you don't want to say. No excuse. Because violence won't, violence won't end until it becomes clear that there's overwhelming moral disapprobation of society, that you are, if you strike a woman, you're not a man, you're a coward. You're just a, simply, you're a coward. The moral disapprobation of society is what changes attitudes. That's what changes attitudes. That's what young men and one y young women respond to, the moral disapprobation of society. And you know, when I introduced this Violence Against Women Act almost 20 years ago, it wasn't immediately greeted with open arms, by the way. Some people said, as I said, it's a family matter, it's a private matter. 
They said it's not appropriate to talk about this in public. How many of you older men and women in the audience remember that if a woman was struck by her husband or a boyfriend, had a black eye, the usual response was, well, I ran into a door jam. Or I, you know, I, just, I slipped and fell. Because it wasn't even thought to be appropriate to say, to say what was happening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all about, it's not, it's not just about changing the law, which we did. It's not going to fundamentally change till we change attitudes, till we change the culture. And thanks to many of the people in this room who I work with over the years, we've come a very long way. Since the Violence Against Women Act was passed, domestic violence has literally dropped by more than 60% in the United States of America. And by the way, and more women are reporting. It's not that they aren't reporting. More and more women have the courage. And just imagine, by the way, you guys, how much courage it takes for a woman who's being beaten by a boyfriend, a significant other, a husband, to find a phone, to pick up the phone and dial for help and say, I need help. Scared to death that that man will walk into the room or see her on a cell phone. You guys want to talk about courage, man. Look at these women. Look at these women who have the courage to stand up and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. So guys, especially young men, you got to have as much courage as they have. You got to have as much courage as they have even if it means you take a risk. Today, many women know they're not alone. That helps available, support, a safe place. Women know that if they come out of the shadows, there's gonna be people willing to pull them into and keep them in the sunlight. That means a lot. But the progress we've made so far isn't enough. Today, young women still face the highest rates of dating violence. Nearly one in five college women, for example, will face sexual assault during her college career. Guys, these just aren't statistics. They're people you know. They're your sister. The woman you were in class with that you like. They're people you grew up with. They're somebody else's daughter. These aren't statistics, man. Just come with me down to the hotline or walk into a violence, against, uh, a violence shelter for women. You know, this problem, uh, this is a problem we have to face head on. And the first step of all of it is, and you know it's this way with every problem, recognize it and speak out. Because folks, attitudes can change. They already have begun to change. Major corporations in America no longer, when you walk in with that black eye, essentially require you to say, ran into the door jam because they don't want a problem. They all have now help available. The attitude's changed. That's changed in the last 20 years. And so much more can change if we speak up. We can end this violence. But it can't happen until everyone understands that dating violence and sexual assault will never be tolerated, and a person who engages in it becomes a pariah. It's that simple, man. These guys are real men. Somebody walk in the locker room and say, you know, last night, man, I did the following. These guys are going to either knock them on their ass. Uh, uh, <laughs> They're either, they, they are going to say something to them. <laughs> and that's a big change. That's a big change. Look, that's what this is all about. Because one really is too many. So please, please spread the word. If you're on Twitter, you can tweet, hashtag, one is too many. Get the word out. Because Peers affect peers more than any other thing that occurs. So I want to thank these guys and 
all of you for being here. And again, my allies that look out there, some of the allies out there have been with me, and I've been with them actually, following them for the last uh, 25 years. So now what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like you all to see the PSA, which uh, we're very proud of, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then we got to continue to stay at it. We've got to get to work. And I should, by the way, I want to thank I want to thank the networks. I want to thank television. I want to thank them for being willing to not just show this once, but with the commitment they've made, how they're going to do it regionally and repeatedly. It will make a difference. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's watch the PSA. Yeah, you can. The TV's right there. So we, we, can, we can walk across there. Yeah, you can see it. Hey everybody, listen up. Listen up guys. Hey guys, listen, listen up. up. No one should ever hit a woman. Not their wife, not their girlfriend, not their date. No woman should have to fear violence, especially not from someone they know and trust. But that's the reality for too many women. We have to change it. It's up to each of us, because even one is too many. Violence against women hurts all of us. Growing up, I was ashamed and afraid of my father when he abused my mom. The worst abuse of power is when a man raises his hand to hurt a woman. We all have to take responsibility. So if you see someone threatening a woman, step up, speak out, and get help. Dating violence hurts all of us. So step up and help end it. Because one is too many. One is too many. One is too many. One is too many. End the violence. Because it's wrong. Because one, one is too many. Folks, there's two people. There's two people who are basically uh, responsible for this. There's a woman who I call the enforcer. She ran my judiciary committee for years. She's now counsel for the vice president's office. Cynthia Hogan, come on up here for people to see you. This is Cynthia Hogan. She is tough as nails. Every time she walks in the office, I go, oh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Come on up, kiddo. And I also want to thank the president, because when we, when we got uh, elected, as Valerie, you know, the president's closest friend other than his family in life, the president asked me, what, what portfolio did I want? I said, I don't want any portfolio. I just want to be the last guy in the room with you. And then I said, no, there's two things. <laughs> there's two things. They're small, but they're big to me in the scope of the whole government that I want to be able to have inside the VP's office. And one of them was the Office of Violence Against Women. Eric Holder is a wonderful guy. I doubt there's any attorney general who would ever put up with that kind of thing occurring where the vice president get to pick Lynn Rosenthal to run the show and <laughs> the people in his office. But Eric and I have been friends for years and years. He feels as strongly about this as I do. So I want to thank the president for allowing me to have so many strong women and men that are as committed to this as the president and I are. So thank you all so very, very, very much. I appreciate all you're doing. And uh, every time I'd walk out of my grandpa's home when I was a kid, he'd say, Joey, keep the faith. And my grandma would yell, no, spread it. Go spread the faith. Thank you all very much.